In this lesson, I'll show you how to use the simplex method to solve maximization problems. This is question two in the series. The question reads, given the information below, use the simplex method to solve the linear programming problem where we're given these constraints and we're given the objective function shown right here and we're expected to find where this is maximized. Now, if you watched question number one, we went through some of the theory behind the simplex method. We will not be covering that theory in this video. Instead, we'll just work on the solution and you can always refer back to question one if you need the theory. So just like in question number one, we started off with the constraints and we wrote them with the slack variable. So the first constraint can be written as x sub one minus five x sub two plus a slack variable. The first one, so we'll label it as s sub one is equal to 25. And for the next constraint, this one shown here, we write down 4x sub 1 minus 3x sub 2 plus a second slack variable, which I'll label as s sub 2, is equal to 12. And for this equation, I'll bring these two terms over to the left side. So we have negative 4x sub 1 minus 6x sub 2, and the z stays on the left side, so I'll write down plus z is equal to zero. Just like what we did in question number one, I'm going to change this into an augmented matrix. That augmented matrix is called the initial simplex tableau. So this equation becomes one minus five, and the coefficient of s sub one is one. There is no s sub two, so we'll write down zero. There is no z in this equation, so we'll write down zero again, and 25. In addition, this becomes four minus three, zero, because there's no S sub one here, but there's an S sub two, so we'll put a one underneath this column. No Z, 12. And finally, over here, we write down negative four, negative six, zero, zero, and one, and the constant here is zero. So I'm going to separate this with these two constraints by putting a line and also, I want to separate the constants from the variables. And just to label this and make it easier for us to understand, this is x sub 1, x sub 2, s sub 1, s sub 2, and z. This is our constant. Now that we've got it to this stage, we want to analyze the numbers here at the bottom. And you want to find the most negative number. So the most negative number is negative 6. And that will be our indicator. So specifically, what we're going to do is take 25 and divide it by this number and we end up with negative five. In addition, we'll take this 12 and divide it by negative three, and we end up with negative four. Now, because both of these numbers are negative, that's a problem. Because what that tells us is that there is no unique optimal solution that will be found. Such a situation indicates an unbounded feasible region. Just to give you an idea of what this looks like graphically, take a look at your screen right now. I have graphed this equation and this equation by isolating for x sub 2 in both. So think of this as x and that as y and I isolated for y. As you can see the point of intersection has two coordinates that are negative and that goes against the constraints also given in the question. And there you have it. That is how to use the simplex method to solve maximization problems. In the next question of this series, we'll look at a question where we have three variables and that's when it becomes really involved. So make sure that you watch question three coming up soon.